Hello everyone, today I'll be reviewing the Runcam Owl from GotHeliRC.com. This is a very small camera, as you can see. It's uh, not incredibly tiny, but let me just show you here. This is a 600 TV line camera, just for a size comparison. It's a little bit smaller, so, and you can see these. This, this camera here came off of my... Uh, Hyperion Vengeance and they have similar lenses but the one on this owl is a little bit nicer if you ask me um, just an all-around nicer lens this is a more expensive camera this this camera here from the Hyperion Vengeance uh, you'd probably get something similar for about ten or fifteen dollars um, just this is a nicer all-around camera um, like I said it's very small and uh, one of the things I can show you here with this little camera um, has a big sensor so one of the things about having a big sensor with your camera is it'll let more light in so you can see better at night. This camera has 0 0.0001 lux, which is very, very low light handling. Now, I'm using a Runcam 2, which is also available at Got Heli RC, to record this video, and um, I can't, I, I can't see the view from the camera right now. So I don't know. Hopefully, you guys can see the sensor in there it's not really big but um, when I show you this one you can you'll you'll obviously see a difference and another thing is the back optics on this lens the glass there it's alright for the cheaper camera it's it is what it is it's not so bad but this run cam owl you'll see has a nicer lens in the back as well as in the front. See it's a nice full lens. Lets lots of light in. Um, and just a much bigger sensor. Let's see if I can hold them up next to each other here. Now, one of the things about this camera that I noticed uh, on the back here, it says 5 to 17 volts, but that that isn't accurate. I think if you put 5 to 17 volts to this plug, uh, it's going to fry the camera. It came with this here, and it shows the adapter wire, and... Uh, it's showing coming out of the adapter 3.3 volts to the camera so this is misprinted I believe it should say DC 3.3 volts and then with this adapter uh, you could have 5 to 17 volt input and it'll convert it to 3.3 for you so just gotta be careful you don't fry your brand new camera by going by what it says on the back of the camera here. Okay, so now I'm going to take a minute to go over a couple of the ways I mounted the Runcam Owl on my Hyperion Vengeance. Uh, this first way is a cheap mount. It's only about $3 and it's available at Got Heli RC. Uh, it's really easy to install. It can mount on just about any quad, I think. Um, I believe it can be mounted upright, upside down, any, any way you really want. It just kind of clamps around the camera. And I used a small piece of uh, 3M double stick tape inside to kind of uh, just make it stick a little better. The clamp was a little bit big for the camera, um, but this holds it really well. And the other way I mounted it was a little more complicated. Um, I went ahead and used the stock one axis gimbal from the Hyperion Vengeance. And um, to do that, I had to make a little uh, piece to go around the camera so that I can screw into it and kind of clamp the camera onto the base of the um, gimbal. And um, to do that, I, I basically just used the stock camera. Um, I took the stock camera apart and used the uh, 
the footprint of the camera and traced it out on a piece of carbon fiber and cut it out with a Dremel and um, drilled the holes that I needed and it seems to work really well. Uh, of course, I probably could have used fiberglass or plastic or, you know, just about anything else. I also was talking to an RC Groups user by the name of Tom Alama. This is his Thingiverse account, and he was nice enough to make this 3D printable version of the carbon fiber mount I made to mount my uh, Runcam Owl to the Hyperion Vengeance single axis gimbal. Uh, that gimbal can be mounted anywhere on any quad if you wire it right, but we weren't sure how these holes would print. And um, the he originally made a two millimeter version, and uh, I told him 1.6 would probably be a little better. But when he printed the 1.6 millimeter version, uh, the holes were almost completely filled. So he's going to be mailing me some samples. I'm a little concerned the center hole with the inaccuracy of the print might need to be a little bigger to fit the camera. So this will be a work in progress, and we'll probably make some changes. For right now, you'd probably just want to use the version with the 2 millimeter holes and uh, maybe have to drill out the holes and grind the center hole a little bit. And I'll go ahead and put this link in the description below. Okay, now I guess I'll go ahead and get into the actual review and flight footage from this camera. Um, first, I want to say I really like this camera. It's, it's very good. It's small. It's light. Um, I didn't think it was going to be as clear as it is compared to um, like a CCD camera. Uh, it's very clear. And, you know, one of the th first things you notice is how bright it is. Uh, the wide field of view is another thing. Here, let me switch the image to something else here. Okay, here you see more of the props in view on this particular model. Some people find that a little bit annoying. Uh, you can see little dark spots here on the lens. That's just some dust I got inside on the sensor, and later I cleaned it out. It's, it's gone. Um, so, but you can see as I move the, the camera, you don't see any darkening of the shot it doesn't black out on you like normal CMOS sensors and here I'm gonna go ahead and go for a flight and um, you know when I'm flying around in my goggles I actually had to turn the, the brightness down a little bit because this camera is very bright um, and sometimes some of the when you point at dark objects some of the brighter stuff around you like the sky and maybe some white parts on the road or water it kind of bleaches out and turns very very white on, on your goggles um, when I'm watching the video here um, it wasn't it, it's nowhere near as bad as what I saw in my goggles but as soon as I turned the brightness down in my goggles it really wasn't an issue and really look at this image um, you can compare this to a CCD camera and really it's pretty comparable. Um, I'm about to fly down into the pits right here and uh, I get real close to the grass and you can see a lot of detail in the grass. Uh, that's, you know, really that's very comparable to most of the CCD cameras I've used. Uh, this camera doesn't have an OSD and you can't change any of the settings. Um, it doesn't have wide dynamic range but when you point it up towards the sun or get into the sky, like I said before, the image doesn't blacken out all that badly. It stays pretty bright the whole time, and that's probably um, one of the benefits of the big sensor that it has. All right, here I'm going to go ahead and take another pass through the pits, um, just so you can see as I'm kind of trying to move through there quickly. Some of the detail, all the objects as I'm going through. Here I'm going to go ahead and get some altitude and then just take a quick look at the lakes over there and then spin around and I'm going to try and point, point the camera up at the sky and just see, you know, again, no blackening of the camera. You can still see the ground, everything is in view. And then I point the camera down right at the black runway and everything is still in view. So this camera really does do pretty well in the daytime. I thought it was primarily a low-light camera, but it really it does both pretty well. Okay, now I'm going to show how the Runcam Owl performs in variable lighting conditions. Uh, this is my home course, and it's late in the afternoon. The sun is starting to go down. 
And uh, this is a pretty good example of variable lighting because you have shadowy areas that have bright beams of light that the camera has to pass over, like right here. And with cheaper uh, CMOS cameras, the camera will tend to black out some, especially like right here where I go from dark to the sun is now glaring over the lens of the camera. Um, just cheaper CMOS cameras don't handle that so well usually. Um, you, you face into the sun and you might end up with a blacked out screen. You know, it only lasts for a second, but when you're in a tight space like this, it, it can really cause you just to grab a vine or a tree and just, that's the end. And um, when it comes to this run cam owl, you can see here on the dark side of the house, everything stays nice and clear in the shadows. And the transition from the shadows to the bright, sunny area, and then back to the shadows is pretty seamless. It doesn't, you know, the white balance doesn't really change a whole lot and drastically uh, throw you off. All right, well, if you've liked what you've seen so far with this camera, uh, I'm about to show you the main feature, in my opinion, which is the low light handling of the run cam owl. Um, what you're looking at on the screen right now is actually footage from the run cam 2, which is a very good HD camera, but it doesn't have the greatest low light handling. And as you can see right now, it's basically blackout. I mean, the sun is is almost behind the trees there's a little bit of light and then there's some ambient light from the stuff around me so um, you can see how dark it is from the run cam 2 and i'm going to go ahead and pop the footage up on screen for the run cam owl and there it is and so this is basically what you would see if you were looking in my goggles you can obviously see it's basically a night and day difference between the run cam owl and the run cam 2 footage All right, this is some footage from a different area in the park. Uh, you'll see the Run Cam 2 footage on the right and the Run Cam Owl footage on the left. Uh, I moved over here because it was later at night and it had gotten darker, so they had lights on two different sides of this little area in the middle here where they just had some trees and stuff. It's just like a little area in the park. There's some picnic tables in the back, so, you know. But this was just a really fun place to fly around. I mean, you can just see the obvious difference between the Run Cam 2 and the Run Cam Owl. It's, it was just a, a blast flying through here. I'm going to let this run for a minute so you can watch it, and then I'm going to switch to something that um, honestly was even cooler than this. I thought this was really fun, but um, there's a, another thing you can do with this camera that makes this night flying even better. Okay, so in a second I'm going to have some different footage up, and um, this is going to be something a little bit different. I haven't really seen anything like this on the internet yet. I don't know if this is the first time anyone's done it, but basically I've made a night vision system and installed it on my quad with the Run Cam Owl as the camera, and it really works pretty well. And it really wasn't that hard to do. I just went on eBay and got some 850 nanometer uh, IR LED bulbs. They were really cheap. You know, I think I got five of them for just like 10 bucks or something. And uh, I have fixed one permanently on the motor mount. So it's kind of always pointing kind of straight forward with a little tilt. And the other one's on some tie wraps that I can uh, kind of adjust the angle. And uh, I also had to get one of those little mini voltage regulators. And I adjusted that to, I think, uh, 1.85 volts it was. So at that voltage, you won't need any kind of resistor or anything in, in the line. You can just attach it direct and wire it in. And uh, you do want to be careful with the infrared lights pointing them into your eyes or anything. You can't see the light from them, really, but it doesn't mean it can't hurt your eyes. So just be careful. And uh, one of the things I did was put a switch on my regulator so I could turn it on and off so that's just not on all, all the time when I'm flying during the day. 
All right, so here's the footage from the run cam two, and the infrared lights are on. And you, as you can see, there's not a whole lot of response to the, from the camera with the infrared lights on. Uh, you mostly see the red lights from underneath the quad. And up in the left-hand corner there, you can see a little light, and that that's the uh, infrared lights from my security cameras around my house. So you can see some infrared light with the run cam two. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave the run cam 2 footage on in the background. I'm going to pop up the run cam owl footage in the corner. And it's obviously, again, a very big difference. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just let this run so you can watch it. And I'll be back in a minute. All right, everyone, that pretty much concludes my review of the Runcam Owl from GotHeliRC.com. Uh, I want to thank you if you've hung in here this whole time. I know it got a little long. I apologize, but I thought it was important to get some of that information out about the mounts and the, uh, the night vision stuff, which just blew me away. I thought a lot of people would find that interesting, so I wanted to include it. Um, thank you very much to uh, GodHeliRC.com for sending me the camera and asking to do this review. They asked me to try and give you an honest review, and that's exactly what I tried to do. Um, like I said, I really do enjoy the camera. Uh, I got to be honest, you know, I had low expectations for the daytime flying and being in the bright sun. Past experience with CMOS cameras, they they have issues with the the white balancing and turning the camera black I mean this one doesn't have that issue and honestly it's just just as comparable to any CCD camera that I've ever bought for around $50 and you know it doesn't have the programmability of the OSD and the menus that CCD cameras have but I find I don't really use that anyway and without the white balancing being an issue it really was a great camera I'll be putting a link in the description below so you can uh, get the uh, Runcam Owl from God Heli RC. There'll also be a link for the uh, red camera mounts that they sell and also a link to the uh, 3D printable mount for the Hyperion Vengeance, which, like I said before, you can mount that on any aircraft you like. Um, you just got to get the wiring correct and make sure that's all right. Um, if there's anybody that has any questions or anything, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Uh, you can go ahead and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I do hope to be doing more reviews in the future. Uh, thank you very much, and have some good flights out there, guys.